Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and audio visualization in Unreal 4. Now, there's many different ways you can go about doing audio visualization. But in this case, we're not going to use any plugins and we're not going to use any Niagara modules. Instead, we're going to use keyboard presses and amplitude to pass data to our Niagara system. So to get this started, I'm going to right click on our content browser and we want a blueprint class from an actor. And we'll just give this a name, BP, whatever you want. And then let's go and set this up. So first things first, we want to set up our keyboard presses. So we don't need event actor begin overlap and we don't need event tick. So we're going to get rid of those. But off of event begin play, we're going to type in enable input. And then so we can get a reference to our player controller or our player start. We're going to drag off of this and we're going to type in get player controller. And now we're set up to use keyboard presses. Now we can right click and just type in keyboard and you can use whatever key you want. I think I'm going to use J and now we need to set up our audio. So under add component, we're going to search for audio and now over in the details panel, you can choose a sound wave or a sound cue. In my case, I'm going to use a sound cue that I've made before. And now I'm going to drag this out so I can get a reference to it. And off of this, I'm going to type in play. And we literally want play. This way we can play that audio whenever we press J in the keyboard. So I'm going to hook this up and I'm going to click compile and save. And now let's go and test this out. So I'm going to drag this out into the world and I'm going to hit play. And right away you'll hear that audio plays. We haven't even hit a key yet. Now there's a reason for this. So if we go and open up our blueprint again, and we look at our audio, in the details panel we want to scroll all the way down. And what you'll see is activation auto activate. If you want your sound cue or sound wave to play right away, you can leave this text. Otherwise we want to turn this off. So I'm going to compile and save. And now let's go play again. So I'll hit J on the keyboard and it's working. So now the next step is how do we get data from our audio? What do we do? And it turns out with just about any component that you add in here, there's going to be certain events that are associated with specific components. So with audio in the details panel under events, we have this on audio single envelope value. And if we click on this plus icon, we're going to get an event for this audio. Now, if we right click on this envelope value and we choose watch this value, it's going to say no debug data. But if we compile this, you'll see now it says 0.000000. So now let's pull this out of the way and we'll make sure that we can still see that. Just pull it down a little bit. Now, if we go and play, we can back up, I'm going to hit J in the keyboard you can see that we're getting a value there. But this value is kind of small. There are some cases where this would be fine, but I think we want a higher value for this. So what I want to do is I want to move the decimal place over. So off of envelope value, I'm going to multiply float by float. And now off of this one, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to do multiply float by float. This way in the top, we're going to add our value that's going to move the decimal. And then this bottom one, I'm going to promote to a variable. And this is going to be our strength. And to add a value to this, I'm going to click compile. And now I'll just set this to something like four. And so we can actually see what these values are. I'm going to do a print string. And then I'm going to drag this value into the in string. Now let's go and compile and save and let play again. And now if we hit J, you can see that our decimal place has moved and our intensity is a lot more. So from here, we can go ahead and increase this more. Or if you want to move the decimal place even more, you can do that. I'm going to set this to 10 as the strength. And now I want to go and set up my Niagara system. So I'm going to right click in the content browser and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And we'll give it a name, NE 
whatever you want to call it. And then let's go and set this up. So first things first, we need to spawn something. So in a minute update, I'm going to add a spawn burst instantaneous. And I'll set this to something like 500. And then in the emitter state, I'm going to change the life cycle mode to self. And in the loop behavior, this is going to be once. And the loop duration mode is going to be once forever. This way we only spawn one set of bursts. And then under particle state, I'm going to turn off kill particles when lifetime elapses. So this way we're getting one burst and then these particles are never going to die. Now the last thing I want to add is a surface for these to spawn on. And I don't want to do this in particle spawn. I want to do this in particle update. This way we can change the size of the surface over time. So under particle update, I'm going to add a sphere location and I'm going to turn on surface only band thickness. This way these particles are only spawning on the surface of the sphere. And then these particles are a little big, so under initialize particle, I'm going to change the sprite size mode to be uniform. And the default should be fine, and this looks great. Now I want to go and set up my Niagara system with a user parameter. So I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to right click on my emitter, and I'm going to create a Niagara system. And we'll just name this correctly, so it says NS, and then we'll open this up. Because in our sphere location, I want to set up a user parameter for the sphere radius. And we know this to be a float. So under user parameters, I'm going to add a new float. And we'll just rename this. And I'm going to call it sphere size. And we'll leave the default at something like 1. And then in our sphere location, we're going to change the sphere radius to be that sphere size. And it should just look like a little tiny dot. And now our Niagara system set up. So back in our blueprint, we're going to add our Niagara system. So we'll search for Niagara particle system. And here's the thing. If you have your Niagara system selected in the content browser and you add it as a component, it'll just be in here by default. Otherwise, you need to come to the details panel and you're going to have to look for your Niagara system. So now, we can drag out a reference to this and then we're going to look for set set Niagara variable by string float and in here this is where we're going to put our user parameter so I'm going to do user dot sphere size oh, size and that should be correct we'll just double check sphere size sphere size and then our end value is going to be our amplitude, the end result of this. So I'm going to drag that in. And then I'll connect this to our set. And now let's go and see what we have. So I'll compile and save. We already have our blueprint out there. So I'm going to hit play. We're going to look for our system. And now if I hit J on the keyboard, you'll see it moves. Now, one thing you'll notice with this setup is that because of my audio clip, all of a sudden it goes to zero really fast. So if you use a different audio clip, it may have different results. But from here, you can go and add whatever you want. If you wanted to add another keyboard press, you could do that. If you wanted to change these colors based on distance, you could also do that. It's up to you. But if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.